Good morning. Merry Christmas. Hi, my name is Melissa Johnson, and I'm the host of Jesus is the Key to Reentry. And I just want to just tell each and every one of you, Merry Christmas. Also, I want to give you a little hope for those of you who have been incarcerated or those of you who have family that's incarcerated and you're still believing God for them and their release. And not just their release, but their transformation. I just want to just tell you that I served 10 years in the federal prison and I celebrated 10 years in prison. And I'm going to use that word celebrated because I did celebrate because Christmas is not depending on the location. Christmas is not depending on what you get or what you don't get, who you are with particularly, but we as believers or of the Christian faith, we believe that this is a time to celebrate the birth of our savior, Jesus Christ. So for me, that's what Christmas is about. And even in that time, even though, yes, I did miss my family. Yes, I did miss being gathered with my family and reminiscing over the things that as a child and how I grew up and, you know, with my family, but Jesus is who gave me peace during that time. If it wasn't for Jesus, I would have been in my bed crying during that time or just down in the dumps. But I will tell you this. Yes, I, I did cry sometimes because I did miss my family, but overall, Jesus gave me peace. He gave me peace during the midst of the storm because I knew that my situation wasn't as bad as I thought it was, you know? And then once I started realizing that it's not about me, it's about him. And I would see other people who didn't have the faith or who believed in Jesus the way that I did. And so what God did is he helped me be there for somebody else to, you know, maybe put a smile on their face and during that time of incarceration, those of you who have been incarcerated, especially in the females, I'm going to tell you what, the females did it up during Christmas. Um, there was one particular sister that that was in there and she made something out of magazines, but, and she had you a gift in it. She knew what you liked and different things because, you know, we lived together for a while. So she cut out different pieces of magazines or articles or sayings that represents you. And I thought that was so creative because she actually took time to cut out these. And I know she did it for probably 30 or more people, but those are the things that meant so much because I'd actually cry when I got the gift. And, and I'm going to tell you what was in it. And it wasn't what it was is because of number one, who it came from. Number two, that she took the time to know me that way. But while I was in prison, one of the things that I used to eat a lot of times was clams and rice or oysters. And, you know, people, different people used to ask me, Miss Militia, would you fix me some clams and rice and, and different things? And guess what? That's where she got me. And it just, when you think that no one is paying attention to you, guess what? They are paying attention to you. And it just meant so much, even though it was just clams and rice, but that meant a lot that she took the time to know something that I really liked. So there was also times that people would just put gifts on your beds and just, it, but it wasn't, like I said, it's not what we got. It's because of the closeness and, and the sisterhood that we formed while we was incarcerated. And I would tell you, there's not probably I to say out of all the people that I came in contact with during the 10 years that I've been incarcerated, I'm still in contact with them, whether they are still inside or outside. God released a lot of us during the COVID pandemic. I'm telling you, that was our chance to get it right again. So I'm just going to give you some hope and encouragement that number one, trouble don't last always. And two, that God is a God of another chance. God is a God of not just second chances, but 
another chance after another chance and after another chance. And what it is, it's because of Jesus love. I was reading this post on Facebook about a young lady and she was saying, far as if you don't do good, you are doomed forever or eternal torture for those that you know, don't believe in God, or if you don't believe in God, that's what's going to happen. And I'm kind of paraphrasing it a little bit, but I do want to say that if you're watching, that's not what Jesus is about. He's not about dooming you forever and, 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 and punishing you if you do good, because in reality, all of us do wrong. In reality, the Bible says all oh, his sin and fall short to the glory of God. That's not what get us there. What get us there is rejecting who he is, rejecting him as our Lord and Savior, unbelief in who he is. But I will tell you this, Jesus is love. He loves you whether you think you perfect. He loves you because he know we're not perfect. He loves the good that you do. He may not love the bad that you do, but he still loves you. And to show you this, I'm going to tell you what, and to give you some kind of hope, as I said, that I'm going to do this morning is if Jesus can do it for me, he could do it for your son. He can do it for your daughter. He can do it for your niece, your nephew, your granddaughter, your grandson, your husband, your wife, whoever it is. If Jesus can change me, guess what? He can do it for them. God is no respect of person. He's no respect of person. And he loves you. That's one thing that I can say that Jesus loves you and he loves me. And right now I'm sitting in my apartment. It's not a house and I'm okay with that right now. I'm sitting in my apartment. I'm sitting in my little office here because I do have a podcast called Jesus is the Key to Reentry. And the podcast is a prison ministry podcast. It's not just for those who's incarcerated. It's for those who's not incarcerated. It's for the churches. It's for people who does advocacy. It's for people who want to be a part of prison ministry. That's what it's about, okay? And November 18th of this year, 2022, that was my two years out of prison. And so two years out of prison, God blessed me with a job. He blessed me, excuse me, let me go back. He blessed me with a job and I received three promotions on my job since I've been there in a year and a half, okay? I got a car this year and I got an apartment this year. Matter of fact, December 10th made the time that he gave me, blessed me with my own home. And also, I have a podcast that goes around, okay? I'm on Facebook, I'm on YouTube, I'm on LinkedIn, and I'm pretty soon getting to go on Pando, which is for the people who's incarcerated. So saying that is look what Jesus is doing for me. And yes, I am a convicted felon. I was convicted of wire fraud. I received a 144 month sentence, a 12 year prison sentence. I did 10 years incarcerated. And guess what? God has given me a, a, a another chance. So this Christmas morning, I'm getting ready to go to church in a few minutes though, but I wanted to come on and I want to share this Christmas morning will be my first Christmas and I will have uh, my son and I will have my daughter here with me celebrating Christmas with me. And I am excited about that. I am, I am so excited about what God is doing, you know, in my life. And just my family. I thank God for my family. I thank God for my um, my grandparents who's no longer here right now. They're 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 with the Lord. Uh, Forrest Nelly Johnson. I have a grandfather Edward Lewis, and he's with the Lord as well. I have two grandmothers that I'm still blessed with: Etris Lewis from Connecticut, and my grandma Rose from Kansas City, Missouri. So I'm grateful for them. I'm grateful for every aunt. I'm grateful for every uncle, every cousin that I have. You know, my sisters, Mavis, Muriel, my brother, AJ. You know, I have my parents that still here. I have a church family, my my pastor, Bishop Re Richard and Dr. Janice Peoples from Faith Outreach Augusta here in Augusta, Georgia, my church family, you know, our covenant partners, everyone. God has just given me another chance. And I just want to just tell you, it's because of the love of Jesus. It's because he loves me. And years prior to me going to getting incarcerated, I struggled with Christmas because I struggled, number one, with loving myself. 
and I want it to be accepted. I want it to be liked by a lot of people. So when Christmas come, I had to be Santa Claus and Jesus and everybody up wrapped up in one. And because I just got my own place, I don't have the funds to do anything. And I'm okay with that now. I'm okay that no one is getting anything from Christmas from Alicia. I said to my family and I said that what you're going to get is you're going to get a place that you can come to. <laughs> you know, that, that's what you got. You got a place that when you come to Augusta, you got a place that you come to. But what I can give them and what I can give you is what Jesus gave me. And that's love. I'm given the gift of love, not just today for Christmas, but for every day. And whether I know your name or not, I love you. And I am so grateful to God that I'm able to do this and to share this. And and I, I love you and I love Jesus. And so the greatest gift that he's given us is love. And that same gift I wanna give to you on this Christmas season. I wanna give you the gift of love. I wanna thank you for our ministry partners. I wanna thank you, God, for Christy Overton Johnson and the Victoria's Living Family, for them accepting me into their family. So they said that I'm a ministry partner to them. Guess what? They're a ministry partner to me as well. Christy has a, a magazine that goes into the prisons that offer hope and encouragement to those who is incarcerated. Because when I was in prison, I was one of the ones reading that magazine. Now I'm on the other side, you know, writing in the magazine and, and trying to encourage other people ministries to to get in part of prison ministries because guess what we need them and so i'm so grateful to christy overton johnson and my victoria's living family each one of you you know i love you and i'm so grateful to god for you i'm just thankful for just my supporters my viewers from jesus is the key to reentry for for being a part all of my my past guests i want to just I, I just love each and every one of you, and I'm grateful. So I just want to tell you that Jesus is the reason for the season, not just this season. He's the reason for every season. He's the reason for every day. Jesus is the reason for everything. And as the name of my podcast, Jesus is the key to reentry. He's the key to happiness. He's the key to peace. He's the key to joy. He's the key to our salvation. He's the key to new life. Jesus is the reason for everything. So I want to give you that hope and let you know that Jesus is the reason. Jesus is the key. He can give you whatever you desire. As long as you delight yourself in him, he will give you the desires of your heart. Make sure your will in lines with his will and you can't go wrong. I'm a living proof of that. So I love you all. I, I, I just, I'm just so full this morning. I'm just full because who would have thought that God would bless me the way he's doing? And guess what? He is not finished with me yet. The favor of God is on my life. And I'm just, I'm just ecstatic of what God is doing and what God is about to do in my life. Jesus is definitely the key. <laughs> Jesus is definitely love. And I just challenge you, those of you who don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, give him a try. His word says that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. In Romans, he said, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, Jesus is the son of God. He not only lived, he died and he rose from the dead. If you believe that in your heart, he said, thou shall be saved. That's the requirement. That's the requirement. But I'm going to tell you this. He loves you and he wants you to be a part of our family. I want you to be a part of our family. And just, you know, I'm putting my contact information there. If you ever want prayer, you know, send me a message, email me, put some chats in the comments here. I, I love you. Like, I love you. Uh, let me know. Just let me know your name, where you're from. And I'm just waiting to see what God has in store for this upcoming year for Jesus is the key to reentry. And I wanna share it with each and every one of you. I wanna share my story. I wanna just share how my road to domestic experience and how God delivered me 
He changed me. He set me free. He gave me a new name. You know, I, I, I was that woman at the well. I was that woman that didn't particularly have five husbands, but I've had my share of men that wasn't my husband's, but God has changed me. And I want to be able to encourage whoever, whomever, because guess what? I do have a story. Like I said, the ones that been with, with multiple men, you know, I try to commit suicide. You know, I've been to prison. You know, I've done a lot of things that I shouldn't have done, but God is using my story for his glory. And that's what it's about. He just wants the glory. He wants the glory. My transformation is because of Jesus. That's my transformation. But I'm going to go because I'll keep talking and talking. And I, I'm a greeter at church and I have to be on post. I have to. I'm just so happy that I have a church family that I'm a part of. This was the church that I was in prior to my incarceration. And I'm home and I have the same church family who extends the love and grace and mercy to me. You had never thought I was incarcerated. So God bless you all. Merry Christmas to you all. I love you. If you need anything, if you need prayer, if you need some encouragement, if you need some direction for your loved one that's incarcerated, just shoot me an email. Check me out. Jesus is the key to reentry. Jesus is the key to life. Merry Christmas and have a prosperous new year. God bless you all. Thank you.